This is the Retirement Education Hour. Happy to be alongside financial instructors Kirk Cassidy and Michael Mazarin. They are retirement financial instructors, and they're with the Retirement Education Foundation. Now, as you know, if you are a regular listener to this program, the foundation hosts courses at major Michigan universities. We're going to be telling you about these courses and most importantly, how you can register. If you haven't been through the course, you owe it to yourself to do it. We believe you deserve a great retirement and these courses are a great first step. So I want on that note, I want to say uh, welcome Kirk and Michael back to the show. Always great to be here with the two of you. You know, we have a lot going on right now with rising interest rates. We've got unrest globally. We've got, um, of course, looming higher taxes coming our way. I want to talk to you about how we should be responding as investors during such times of upheaval, right? Because I know we're human, so our emotions can get in the way. But you say we shouldn't be letting those emotions come into play, right? Well, yeah, I think it, I think it might be helpful if I sort of start with a little story, right? When we started the Retirement Education Foundation over 10 years ago now, I brought my brother, Dr. Paul Mettler, who often does this show with us, uh, he, I brought him into my firm in our private practice, and then particularly we brought him in to help us develop the the foundation. Because look, we believe that there not only was a lack of good advanced retirement planning for those people with that five hundred to ten million dollar space. We we thought that everyone was trying to the whole financial service industry was doing a one size fits all solutions, a cookie cutter plan. Everyone was doing the same thing, and that wasn't giving anyone the greatest, most efficient potential retirement plan. So the thought was we were going to teach a class to help people learn more advanced planning strategies. But we had a, another advantage, and I, a little different agenda, was helping people to better understand the psychology around retirement and some of the behaviors that get in our way during retirement. And that's why I brought my brother in. My brother is a doctor of psychology, uh, Psy D, Northwestern, got his MBA from the University of Michigan. And I said, Paul, help us develop and better understand why people react and behave when we have short-term market events. Why do older people tend to be more uh, scared, right? I know the perception is old people are cheap. It's not true. They're not cheap. They're scared. They're fearful of outliving their money. They're anxious. And why are they more anxious? It's because this is the first time in their lives they actually have to pay themselves and no one else is sending them a paycheck. So this relationship with money changes once you retire, which really lends to a lot of behavioral challenges when it comes to your money, your quality of life in retirement, managing the aging process. We're managing loss, cognitive loss friends dying, loss of jobs, we're losing things. And so this incorporates depression and depression helps to incorporate anxiety. So how do we help manage these things through our education in the foundation? So part of the course that we're teaching is to provide not only tools to help you to identify why are you behaving the way you're behaving and how are you likely to behave throughout retirement, but what tools through effective planning, advanced retirement planning, what tools can you learn about to help you not behave and react the way most people are going to behave and react? It's difficult because, you know, economic, uh, every economic textbook assumes that the, the consumer will be a rational consumer. And same with investing. Buy high, sell low, don't... Uh, Flip that. <laughs> Buy low, sell high. There you go. Don't panic when the market's falling. And people know those things ahead of time. But when we have events that occur, it's always something different. So 2008, there's a, almost a financial collapse. The COVID crash was a healthcare event. It's always something different, and people do panic. They they are always that they, they most always panic, particularly towards retirement. And it's why we started the foundation. It's why we started the charity and why we ta started teaching classes at all the major universities around Michigan. They're eight hours of education, 200 page textbook. This is an advanced retirement planning course. That's what it is. And all you have to do to register is go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. So let's talk about, Kirk and Michael, what you want our listeners to come away with today on the show. Well, I, I, first is to identify 
the potential behaviors you have today that's causing you or preventing you from doing things that you could be doing or should be doing. So so the, the, the first step is to identify, is this me or, or not? Second is begin to understand, believe us when we tell you, because we have all the data. I mean, in our private practice, we're responsible for, for over $2 billion, over 1,000 people between the ages of 50 and 102 years old. We know their be- people's spending behaviors. We know what they're going to do, how they're going to behave, and how they're going to react. We collect all the data. We took a behavioral Uh, a data collection approach to this so that we could help teach you and give tools to you to avoid these mistakes. So hear us when we talk about these mistakes and we're going to use some examples where people find themselves getting in trouble that you can prevent yourself from the same path as you approach retirement or get into retirement. And it's also important to be open-minded about this. I mean, we get lots of people who are engineers, CPAs, doctors, they're very data-driven people in their careers, and they assume that they're data-driven people with their own retirement planning. And it's just not the case. It's one thing when you're looking at numbers on a spreadsheet for your job versus your own personal financial numbers that are related to your own retirement. I, I cannot tell you, you're, I, you don't have to believe this. I'm telling you, your relationship with money is going to change. In this whole cost-benefit analysis and this, the, these these analysis on how and when to take Social Security, if you should take the pension versus the lump sum, all these different decisions you that you're making and you're trying to do it as, you, as you've approached your job is going to cost you, cause you a lot of problems in retirement. That's just reality because, because your relationship, you'll never be more vulnerable. You, you're cognitively going to start losing things. Mathematics is the first that begins to slip. Everything begins to change. And so all the math you used when you decided what you should do with Social Security or pension lump sum or should you have life insurance or should you take money out of your IRAs, all of these things are going to change, especially during market events or elections you don't like or policies you don't like. There's so many influences that are causing you to make mistakes. We're going to try to help you avoid those mistakes. So we would encourage you to register for one of our eight-hour classes. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. We'll be back. Plenty more Retirement Education Hour coming up. Happy to be alongside financial instructors Kurt Cassidy and Michael Mazarin for another great edition of the Retirement Education Hour. We're talking about emotions today, and you're probably wondering, okay, how does that figure in to retirement planning? Well, as Kirk and Michael are explaining, emotions oftentimes drive our decisions, and we have to be cautious of that when we are investors and we're trying to look at retiring successfully. So they're giving us some great tips around this. I want to give you more resources so that you can feel confident about this next phase of life. We want you to be registering for the Retirement Education Foundation's courses held at major Michigan universities, including the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, both the Novi and Troy campuses or Oakland University, you can register right now. Simply go to retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. All right, Kirk, Michael, as we talk about emotions in investing and how to make sure that we're doing um, we're doing right by these emotions, right? We're not letting them control us too much. There are people who are just simply risk averse, right? They don't like risk. They don't like any part of it. How do you look at someone like that in that position and how should they be forging ahead, especially in the environment we're in right now? So a couple things. First, in preparing people for today's show is, is today's going to have a little less, a bit less structure, a little more just firing behaviors, reactions, and uh, it, it just, just, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to sh- fire them at you all over the place. There's going to be less structure. So we're going to start with risk aversion, right? This is very common. There's a lot of secondary things we do because we have risk aversion as we age. This is natural. The number one fear for retirees is outliving our money. Actually, I'm sorry. 
to be fair, it's the, the second largest fear they have. The first is health. Their health is the number one fear. The second largest fear is outliving their money. And as a result, they become much more risk adverse as they get older. And so it's one thing to be to be risk adverse from an investment perspective. And frankly, most people don't understand how do how do like right, it, it, Michael, I love risk adverse, so I'm gonna have a 4060 portfolio. Well, that got crushed this year. There was no way to prevent any abuse and risk this year. There was no place to hide. There wasn't. And I also love in the class, we asked people, raise your hand and tell us what a a moderate investment would be. And some people say blue chip stocks. Some people say bonds. <laughs> some people say biotech. Stuff. Every, people have different answers for what they consider to be conservative or moderate or aggressive. But the people who are risk averse, that's, that's first and foremost, it's normal. I mean, humans are risk averse in a lot of features of our lives. It's kind of an evolutionary trait. And so when we're approaching retirement, that's no different because like you said, the second greatest fear is running out of money. And so people typically build in so many safety nets to their sort of rudimentary plan. Things like, well, I'm going to assume a 6% inflation factor because if it's less then great, I have more money. I'm going to assume that I need to have $2 million left at the end for some catastrophic long-term care event. And if I never have that thing, then great, my kids get $2 bucks. So that's, in and of itself, that's not the worst thing in the world to do, but you're being so, so, so overly cautious that you're probably not going to reach your goal as soon as you want to, and you're going to end up working a lot longer than you have to or spending less than what you can really afford. Well, that's the interesting part. It, manifest, it manifests in so many different ways, right? I mean, let's just tackle the two you mentioned. I, I, I'm going to have two, three million dollars left at the end to make sure I never outlive my money, which therefore means I didn't retire when I could have retired, right? I did not spend. And, and by the way, for most of our listeners, the people who are attending our courses, we know that they have, they tend to have about a million dollars plus of investable assets and they tend to be highly educated, right? So the idea of working your entire life to make sure that when you die, you have more at death or the same at death than you did when you first retired because of fear and anxiety doesn't seem like you're living the, the retirement you really wanted to or you could have. Our fear for people, most of the people, isn't that you're going to outlive your money. Most of the people that are attending our courses, it's you're not going to outlive your money. It's that you're going to way underspend what you otherwise could have spent if you just understood how to construct an effective plan to mitigate the risks. And Michael, the problem is the answer our industry promotes to mitigate the risk is all wrong. It has nothing to do with what you stock pick or market time. It doesn't matter if you're jumping in and out, you're trying to figure out and avoid market volatility. It doesn't mean you need to reduce your spending during times of volatility. The only portfolio management that needs to happen in retirement is where you take your income from during the times of volatility. Look, here's the thing, Michael. We know we're going to have many major market events through a 30-year retirement. Likely four to seven major market events, three to five recessions. We're going to have health care events. We're going to have life events. All these things, we're going to have one spouse predecease the other if you're married. These things we know are going to happen. If we know they're going to happen, we just don't know when they're going to happen, we need to construct a plan so that when the, it happens, we have a pivot. For example, when we have that mark, major market event, I pull income from an account that is not exposed to that down market. That way, I do not have to change my lifestyle. I do not get trapped by something called sequence of return risk. I will not outlive my money. You can construct a retirement plan with a controlled spend down of your principal. You can controlled spend down of your money without outliving your cash flow. It's, it, it's not difficult to do, but you have to find the right team to help you and you have to understand what levers to pull, when to pull, and then you can really spend the money that you've earned and without fear and anxiety. So I would argue it is difficult to do. That's why it's important. To okay, find, sorry. That's why it's important to find the right team. But that is, it's the key where people who are retiring, they're two or three or four million dollars. They don't want 
to leave that much to the kids. They want to spend it, but they don't know when can they afford to retire, how much can they really afford to spend per year, how to manage the taxes, all these different pieces that are all connected together. 6% inflation rate, Michael. That's what you said, too. I've, we've seen people do it. That's crazy. That is ridiculous because you're not going to spend nearly the amount of money in your 80s than you did in your 70s, and you're going to spend less in your 70s than you did in your 60s. You're going to spend the money in your 60s. That's when you're going to spend it. Some in the 70s, and it's going to stop in the 80s significantly. This inf- Inflation is a tool to f- scare you by our financial service industry for a lot of reasons. You need to come to one of our courses. It's an eight-hour class. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And we'll be back with Kirk and Michael right after this. Happy to be alongside Kirk Cassidy and Michael Mazarin. They're with the Retirement Education Foundation. They're both financial instructors, and you can meet them and several of the other instructors when you make plans to attend the foundation's retirement planning courses taught at major Michigan universities. And here are the locations. We're talking about the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, both the Novi and Troy campuses, or Oakland University. And if you'd rather listen and attend and the comfort of your own home, you can do that as well. They do offer virtual courses. Here's what you need to do to register. Simply go to the website. Go to retirementplanningedu.org. Once again, that's retirementplanningedu.org. It's a great way to register. You can learn more about the times and locations. Find a date that works best for you. And keep in mind, these courses fill up quickly. The other way to register is with a phone call. So you can call 800-240-8981. We're talking about your emotions today and how that can affect you as an investor as you get closer to retirement. We've gone over a lot already, but I know, Kirk and Michael, you want to talk about something called anchoring, which can affect us. Uh, Tell us about this behavior and how it comes into uh, play as we get ready for retirement. So Anchoring bias is really common. Anchoring bias is simply when someone sees a number. So for example, a stock, if someone buys a stock at a hundred bucks and then it falls to 80, now they're just thinking, okay, I'm going to hold on until it gets back to a hundred. And then once it gets back to a hundred, I'll sell it. <laughs> and they're anchored to that a hundred dollar price. That's what they bought it at. So that's what they're, they're waiting and waiting and waiting for, whether that company changed or whether they should be selling it for a different reason, but they're anchored to that hundred dollar number. Michael, we're seeing tremendous amounts of anchoring going on right now, and it's going to it's going to devastate a lot of people's retirements. And in this case, it's more about their portfolio value, not That's just right. a single stock. So people will say, well, you know, back in late 2021, near the market, market all-time high, I had two million bucks, three million bucks, five, whatever the number is, and now I have 15 to 20 percent less. And they say, I can't retire right now. I have less. I'm not at my all-time high right now. That is such a mistake. To quote Warren Buffett, you have to be insane to risk what you have for something you don't need. I'm going to say it again. You have to be insane to risk what you have for something you don't need. In other words, if you have what you need to now, if you have what you need today, right now, to give you what you want in retirement, all you're doing is putting yourself at greater risk, particularly right now, given the environment we're in. If you're in the camp of someone with a lump sum pension, folks, you need to get out. You know, four people got to go. If you're close and you're close to having enough, that's why you need to come to the class. Again, there's so much misinformation. You guys are using silly calculators that Fidelity, Schwab, your 401ks, your your Ford's 401k has a, a, a retirement calculator. Do I have enough to retire? Those calculators they're really useless, Michael, because they're using an outdated rule. They're using a either a 4% rule or a 3.3% rule. Based upon that, many of you will never get to retire and have the lifestyle you want. That's not the number. That's why you got to come to the class. We're going to teach you. We show right at the beginning of class how you can take an 8% withdrawal. An 8% withdrawal in your mid-60s with a zero chance of outliving your cash flow. You just have to construct an individualized plan for you. Now, if you're sitting there wondering to yourself, why? Why can these people teach us how to do that, but the rest of the industry doesn't teach us that? Well, you'll see when you come to the class that the plans we're going to teach you to build 
takes the ind- professionals 50 to 60 hours to build. The rest of the financial service industry is not going to spend 50 to 60 hours building you a retirement plan. They're going to sell you products. They're going to push your information into eMoney or Money Guide Pro, and it spits out a probability of success retirement plan that tells you to take out 4% a year so they can move on to the next person and sell that person. So in that 50, 60 hours that we spend to build a plan, they are meeting with five to 10 other people selling them variable annuities and mutual funds and a bunch of crap you shouldn't own anyways. That's what they're doing. So that's one of the reasons. Why is the other reason why the financial services industry isn't going to teach you how to maximize your withdrawal rates? Michael, why? So one of the, I mean, one of the bigger reasons, in my opinion, is if they're encouraging people to truly spend down their their nest egg, their retirement accounts, then there are smaller accounts for them to bill fees on. You so got if it. Someone starts Money. with two million dollars and they spend their three or four percent per year, and they have a nest egg of two million dollars for the next 25, 30 years of their retirement. That person can now charge their fee based on that two million dollars for the next 25 to 30 years as opposed to them spending maybe five, six, seven, eight percent per year and spending that nest egg down, that reduces that person's fee. You got it. So that's what we teach in the class. Look, just to be clear, Forbes has featured our foundation in our courses. They have f- featured our courses in their magazine. We teach at every major, almost every major university in Michigan. We have over a thousand clients in our private practice responsible for over two billion dollars. And we have taught thousands and thousands of people. We are not teaching you crazy uh, life insurance, uh, no, tax but, free but, things like that, but, or the the real estate. No, or my point is, we're placements. not teaching these 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 aggressive type of strategies. It just requires time, planning, and managing emotions. That's what it, and and being able to be see through the financial service industry who really is more interested in protecting their income than seeing you being able to spend down your wealth. They don't want you to spend down your wealth. If you protect their principal, if you protect your principal, they make more money and they don't have to work to make sure your plan is effective. You're self-regulating your own plan. Well, they'll tell you, protect your principal, spend less during term, times of market volatility. That's totally the wrong so answer. They encourage the anchoring. They'll say, yeah, yes. you can't retire yet because you're not back to all-time highs. Let's wait till the market gets back to all-time highs before you can retire, when you might have enough already. We have helped, it, just through the class, thousands and thousands of people over the last 10 years have retired five, three, five, seven years before they ever thought they could because they didn't realize what they had and what it could provide for them. Everything you should do at this point in your lives, if you're within five to 10 years of retirement, every decision you make, how much risk you're taking, what you invest in when you retire needs to be based upon what do I need in retirement to give me what I want? That's what it needs to be based on. It needs to be goal oriented. Forget targeted numbers. Forget Medicare at 65. All of that is irrelevant. What do I need to give me what I want? If you want to learn how to do that, You need to attend an eight-hour course at all the major universities. We're also streaming them live from the universities so you can do it from your own home. If you'd like to attend, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. And we'll be back. There's much more straight ahead. You're listening to the Retirement Education Hour. Here with Kirk Cassidy and Michael Mazarin for the Retirement Education Hour, and we're glad you've tuned in today. Have you registered for their courses yet? Well, the Retirement Education Foundation offers courses throughout the year at major Michigan universities, and we invite you to attend. This is a crucial first step on your road to and through retirement. We want you to attend so that you can feel more confident about this next stage of life. Leaving the workforce? It can feel a little bit daunting, but if you have the right tools and strategies at your disposal, you can have that confidence to enjoy retirement. It's really what it's all about. So make plans to register right now. Simply go to retirementplanningedu.org or you can call 800-240-8981. Kirk and Michael, we've been talking about our behavior, our emotions, and how some of the psychology works either to our advantage or against us as investors getting ready for retirement. 
there is a behavior called recency bias. And of course, you know, this is the tendency to just really focus on things we remember most, the things that happened uh, recently. How does that affect us, Michael? So recency bias is really important. But before I jump over to that one, I want to wrap up quickly the anchoring from the last segment here. So as we mentioned, people are anchoring towards those all-time high portfolio values they saw back in late 2021, early, early 2022. And they're telling themselves, well, I'll just keep working and keep saving. And once I get back to that, whatever the number was, $2 million, $3 million target, then I'll retire. Well, the problem with that is we don't know, one, how long it'll take to bounce back. And two, we could see more pain between now and then. So you would have been better off retiring earlier anyways. Simply working longer is not always the answer. It's, it's actually, for a lot of people, it's the wrong thing to do. It'll, be hurt, it'll hurt them to work longer. Now, back to recency for a second here. The reason that could potentially be a problem is people are used to, based on recent corrections, they're used to seeing really snappy recoveries. So for example, the COVID crash, we saw the fastest crash of all time. It fell roughly 34% in 21 days. And then we saw the fastest recovery of all time. So now we have another correction. Now it's 2022. And we are, for the first time since 07, 2007, the market is below trend for over 90 days. So it's yeah. taking the market a lot longer than usual to bounce back. And people are starting to get a little concerned of, wait a minute, it's been three months. Why are we not back to all-time highs yet? Well, it's, that's not how the market always works. But based on recency bias, people have been conditioned based on the past 15 years or so that, okay, the market falls, but it's going to pop back in the next 30 days or, or 60 days or 90 days. That's not always the case. It isn't always the case. And, Michael, maybe it does. That's not the point. No one's here. Look, you can't get economists to agree on anything right now. You can't. I would. I, would, I mean, the Fed just had a meeting at Jackson Hole, and the market fell 3-ish percent on the day. And the Fed chairs said, good, we're glad the market fell. We want that's what they're telling people. Well, they're, tr they're obviously trying to dampen the, the, the economy. They're trying to slow it down, obviously, to manage inflation. That's, that's a whole different discussion. The, here's the point. The, the, the point is we don't know what this landing is going to feel like, right? Could be a soft landing. Could be a rocky landing. No one knows. It could be a short It could be uh, – we may be in a recession, maybe not in a recession. We may end up in a recession – we, everyone's every one of us has their our own personal opinions right and I, i'm not here to argue with any of your opinions but i'm gonna say none of us really know and none of us know how long it's going to be on how long it's going to last and this goes back to buffett if you have what you need to give you what you want you have to be insane to continue risking this for something you don't need if you've won the marathon if you have won then stop rerunning the last 10 miles of the marathon, which many of you are doing. And it's because you don't understand your own behaviors, your own anxiety, your own fear, your own anchoring, your recency bias. All these biases are causing you to continue to hang on. I mean, we just don't have the time in an eight-minute segment. But there are so many reasons why if you've won and you have what you need, by continuing to work, Many of you are going to end up with a worst outcome in retirement. And there's so many reasons why. I'll name a few. We don't have as long of a runway to Roth convert. So we can minimize taxes. Taxes is a big variable to being able to retire earlier so we can reposition assets to minimize your taxes. I'll give you another one. We hit a recession and you're older. You're in your late 50s. You're in your 60s. If there's a recession and your company's cut back, you're the ones being cut, you're out. And you're going to be out with your portfolios down 15 to 30% because we're in the middle of a recession. And you're not going to get another job because the job markets are going to start to slow down. You could have a health event in three years and not to get, you know how many times people have died, had strokes, major market events, people we've taught, people in our private practices that should have retired, that didn't retire, that missed out on their entire retirement because, because they came up with this excuse that I had to hit my $3 million number to retire. Why? Well, I don't know. That's, that was my goal. So I, I'm not retiring until then. Or second one is I, got, I, I can't retire until Medicare. I got to wait until 65. You got three, four, five million dollars. Who cares about waiting for Medicare? You can pay for your own private insurance. The difference between your private insurance and Medicare is nothing. It's not, it's nothing for someone that has a couple, three, four, five million dollars. It's meaningless. 
You, it can't move the needle on your retirement. That was just an excuse that you anchored to. And so while people are biding their time at work, trying to hold on until the market recovers, because again, they're so used to, based on recency bias, they're so used to those snappy recoveries. We haven't seen an event where the market takes a couple years to get back to break even since 2008. It took the market roughly five years to get back to break even. Are you really going to work at your job for five more years when you had enough already? Michael, we lost a whole decade, 2000, 2010, a whole decade. The market did nothing for a decade, zero. The, the dot-com, bu- the bubble, yep. and then 07, 08, it took the, the market almost went nowhere for 10 straight years. You're, about, you're pretty close to right. Now, <laughs> pretty close, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> now, is someone really going to buy their time at work for three, five, seven years and work three, five, or seven years longer than they have to and then realize when they're 85 years old and they still have one, two, three million dollars? Shoot. I should have retired five years earlier. That's the point. In my healthiest go-go years. So, so that's the point, Michael. This is the disconnect. People think the general rules apply to them, and they don't realize the average baby boomer, the average person retiring is going to retire with $200,000 saved. That's what they're going to have. And if that's what you have, then you need to follow those rules. You need to worry about protecting your principal. You need to keep working. But if you've got million, two, three, four, five, six million dollars, those general rules don't apply to you. You're not the average retiree. You need to learn these things. Attend one of our eight hour courses. We're streaming them live directly from the universities and teaching at all the major universities. Go check out the website. You can register there at retirementplanningedu.org or call 800 240 8981. And we're back with Kirk and Michael right after this. Happy to be alongside Kirk Cassidy, Michael Mazarin, both from the Retirement Education Foundation. They are financial instructors, and you'll hear from them and some of the other instructors when you register for the foundation's courses on retirement planning. And these courses are held throughout the community at major Michigan universities. Uh, Here are just a few. University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Oakland, Michigan State. So register now at the website. It's an easy way to do it. You can see all of the dates, all of the times and locations, retirementplanningedu.org. Again, that's retirementplanningedu.org. Or you can call to register 800-240-8981. All right, Kirk, Michael, talking about behaviors today and how behaviors, human behavior, can affect the way we look at our finances leading up to retirement. Tell me about a few more of these behaviors to be aware of. Well, Michael, will you introduce quickly the Dunning-Kruger effect so that I can give some examples of what we're watching and seeing right now? So the best way to describe it is ideally with to show the curve. There's a visual curve that goes along with it. But essentially, when people begin a new activity, so for example, let's just pick investing, and they have a couple early wins. They think, holy smokes, I am really good at this, and I'm smarter than everyone else, and I have some edge or some niche here. And then they take more and more and more risk, and then they wipe out because they, they weren't really good. They just got lucky early on, and by taking more risk, they wiped out. And then the longer they stick with it, the, they, get, they get humbled, and then if they keep sticking with it, they'll recognize how complicated it truly is, all the different aspects to it, and they'll get better over time again, but they won't get quite as overconfident as they were originally. This was a study done at U of M, right? One of the main uh, people, one of the main people in the study was from U of M, correct? I think in that study, they talk about what percentage of Americans think they're good drive, very good drivers. So above average drivers. Above average so drivers. mathematically, yep. everyone can't be above average. And and there, an example is if you ask a, a room of a hundred people, raise your hand if you think you're an above average driver. Something like eighty five people raise their hands. <laughs> well, mathematically, that's impossible. Eighty five people cannot be above average. I, I'm pretty confident eighty five percent of the people are not above average in driving. <laughs> I'm pretty confident we're not all. I know that can't be true. So so here's here's a great example of this, right? Look, the baby boomers, you, you all got really lucky. You did a lot of good things to be in the and, and I'm gonna ask people, please don't get defensive, right? We are national experts. Forbes has done an article about our, our education. 
We are taking care of CFOs from Fortune 500 companies, UPS, executives at the automotive industries. We have pension fund managers. We take care of some really bright people, and those are the type of the people who are attending our courses, okay? So when I say this to you, don't get defensive. Many of you have done a lot of really good things over the last 30 years to accumulate your wealth. The two very most very, most important pieces to success was saving your money, starting early and saving your money and allowing compound interest to do its work. So save a lot and be disciplined. And two is to invest and be disciplined. Now, what you guys stumbled into, the baby boomer generation stumbled into was many of you were very disciplined in your savings and you did that well. And you stumbled into the greatest bull market in the history of the stock market at the time that your portfolios were 15, 20 years, 30 years into compound interest where you were generating the greatest amount of horsepower. If you understand how compound interest works, it's really boring for the first 10 to 15 years, but then it's almost like magic. It just piles on itself. And it was piling on itself while we had the greatest bull run in the market history. You could have thrown a dart at the wall and you would have made money. And you may, and you would have made a lot of money given where you guys were at in your savings and your uh, savings professional careers. That's, that's the bottom line. I cannot tell you how many times people come to the classes and they're sometimes they're there to brag about, well, you know, I, I did a fantastic job saving. I'm a great investor and they want to brag about their stock picks. And we would have told them, look, that stock. Yeah. So uh, Disney from 2000 from to uh, 2012 was dead money. Did, did nothing. The stock did nothing. And so maybe you owned it from 2012 to 2014 and it was up 50 percent. Good for you. But if you just own the stock market, the index for that whole time, you would have done a lot, lot better. Folks, stop. Look, Mike, we don't even need to debate this. Look, if you put a million dollars in the S&P 500 20 years ago, you'd have over five, almost five and a half million dollars today. That's all you needed to do. None of you beat that. None of you. None of you beat that. No one's beat that. One million dollars. Don't add any money to it and just leave it alone for 20 years. You have over five and a half million dollars. So you guys got lucky. It was not You weren't lucky in the fact that you saved and you were disciplined. Those were all good things. But trust us when none of us, not me, not Michael, no one in our industry is going to beat the S&P 500 over any extended period of time. It is a fraud. Our industry is a fraud. They tell you their value proposition is they can market time and stock picker better than you guys, which isn't true. They can't. One of the best examples is Jim Cramer. Jim Cramer on TV has more access than just about anyone in the world to CEOs, CFOs, analyst teams, researchers. And if you track his his personal uh, investing club performance versus the S&P, he's underperforming by about 100% in the past 20 years. Underperforming the S&P by 20%. If you just put your money in the index, then put your money with Jim Cramer, who has more access than just about anyone in the world to these kind of these these inside research tips. You don't have more teams, more research, not speed dial CEOs and CFOs. You don't have more boots on the ground. You don't have any more inside knowledge than Jim Cramer. And Jim Cramer loses by over 100 percent. Forty percent of all mutual fund companies fail after 10 years. There hasn't been one mutual fund manager that's been able to stay in the top quartile, the top 25% for five consecutive years. Never happened. Actively managed mutual funds are performing over the last 30 years at 3.96%. The S&P 500 is at 11. You are not good at investing. Trust us. You got lucky with your timing. I promise you you're taking much more risk for the amount of return you are getting. You are entering a new phase of life where you're distributing your wealth. It's not just saving money, and it's not the same type of market, and it won't be the same kind of market for the next 10 years that we had the last 10 years. So instead of having just the two levers of earning money and saving money, now there are 15 levers. There's more than that, 30 levers, and that's what we're teaching you in the classes, all the levers. It won't be what you invest in that drives performance in retirement. It's when you take income from which accounts, minimizing taxes, and eliminating sequence of return risk. You have to sign up for one of our classes. It's an eight-hour class taught at all the major universities. We're streaming it live also if you want to stay at home. 
All you have to do is go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And we'll be back. There's more with Kirk and Michael right after this. Here with Kirk and Michael, they are both financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. And of course, we've been telling you about the foundation's courses taught at major Michigan universities. And these courses are designed to give you confidence to enter retirement and actually enjoy it instead of worrying so much about Will you have enough income? Will it last through your retirement? Will your loved ones be okay when you're gone? These are the types of questions that people have on their minds when they enter these courses. And Kurt Cassidy, Michael Mazarin, the other financial instructors with the foundation, they help you answer those questions so that you can feel good about your retirement future. They believe you deserve a great retirement. So get registered now. Go to retirementplanningedu.org. Again, that's retirementplanningedu.org, or you can call 800-240-8981. We've been talking about some of the fundamentals behind behavioral finance. That's right. Our behaviors impact the decisions we make around our finances. This is hugely important as you get closer to retirement. And Kirk and Michael, there are a few other of these behaviors that we have to be aware of. Tell us more. So one really important one is the herd mentality. People typically end up following the herd in some type or in some fashion because the thought process is, well, this must people must be doing this for a reason. This must be the right way to do it for a reason. So if they're following a rule of thumb, the 4% rule, the 60-40 portfolio, they think, well, people who this is their job have been promoting this rule of thumb, so it must be right for some reason. I'll just, I'll just stick with the herd. Or Social Security, I'll take mine at 62 or full retirement age or 70 or whatever the calculator says because I'm following the herd. And one story I always laugh about, Kirk, is – Someone told us that their HR person at work recommended them to start Social Security at full retirement age once they retired. And I asked that person, okay, does your HR person at work know how old your spouse is? Nope. Do they know about your health history? Nope. Do they know about your personal net worth? Nope. Do they know about your retirement date goal? Nope. Okay. So that's just a couple pieces of information that you need to use to determine the right date for Social Security. They know none of it. How can they possibly recommend the right way to take Social Security? So if anyone tells you what you should be doing, run. Because they don't know. Stop following friends. It does your friend might have two million dollars and you might have two hundred thousand. What they're doing isn't what you should be doing, or vice versa. If you're reading articles that says you should do something. Who are they talking to? Are they talk? Remember, are they talking to the average baby boomer that is going to retire? Because the average person retiring right now is retiring with two hundred thousand dollars saved. Are you that person? If you're not that person, don't read any of the articles. Don't follow any of the general rules. You are an individual with very specific needs, goals, resources, objectives. It has to be specific to you. Stop letting them be lazy in cookie cutter your retirement plan. That is insane. Stop the online calculators with Social Security. That is a waste of time. What drives your decision on Social Security, P.S., is going to be health. And it's not your health. It's the health of the youngest person. I don't care what your health is. The other thing is going to be, and probably the most important thing, is taxes. Because your Social Security is taxable and impacts the taxation on your dividends. It'll impact your taxation on capital gains. It impacts your taxation on your required minimum distributions. It's a puzzle. And the only way to do it right is has to be done for you individually. So that's why you have to build a plan. There has to be a plan and we show it in the class. Hell, we have a sample plan on the website that you go to register. There's so many resources you guys should go look at. Just go look what a sample plan looks like, and you'll attend the class. If you watch that, you'll attend the class because we're going to teach you how to construct your own individualized retirement plan with 30 years of tax projections so you know when you should be taking income from which accounts. There's so many variables in all of you are unique and different. Some of you single, some of you are married, some of you are married with age gaps. 
That means a whole different strategy. Your spouse might be 10 years younger than you. So that means you're going to work until 75 years old so that your spouse 65 years has an old can retire and has enough money to last their life. Well, there's a way to get you both to retire earlier and protect that younger spouse. You just got to know specifically for you. Stop following everybody. And the challenge is, so like you said before, there are so many variables and not just that, but each variable impacts the other one. So when you pull one lever, when you pull Roth conversion levers, either you Roth convert more or less or don't Roth convert at all, whatever the answer is, that doesn't just impact your Roth conversions. Oh, no. That impacts your RMDs. That impacts your Social Security taxability. That impacts your AGI for Medicare premiums. There are so many things that are- Capital gains. That are all linked together here. It's not just- tackling each of these different topics in isolation. That's it. I'm telling you, come to the class and you're going to see an approach to retirement that you've never seen before because the financial service industry refuses to do it for you. We're teaching you what people with super high net worth, those people with $25 million of investable assets or more has a team, a family office team that does this type of planning for them. And they are charged over $100,000 a year to get that done for them. You don't have that. You have one to ten million dollars, so you have to follow the average baby boomer with two hundred grand, and you're going to get the cookie cutter, one size fits all solution. You can have the custom individualized plan, but you need to understand what is involved, all the levers that are involved, so that you can make sure you find the right team to help you do it, or learn to do it yourself, which is is not very likely. But you need to come to that conclusion yourself when you attend a class. This is advanced. Be prepared. It's eight hours. It's a 200-page textbook. We move fast. It is an advanced course. It is not basic financial literacy. I'm telling you it's going to move fast, and it's really detailed and advanced. Okay? We're teaching at all the major universities, Michigan, Michigan State, Oakland, Eastern Michigan University. We're streaming it live from the universities. We have a learning center in Livonia, there's no reason not to attend a course. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Investment advisory services are offered by Strategic Investment Advisors, Inc., an SEC-registered investment advisory firm. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any insurance discussed in this show is backed by the financial strength and claims-paying abilities of the issuing carrier. This show is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual situation. Retirement Education Foundation is not permitted to offer, and no statement made during this show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein provided by third parties have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Retirement Education Foundation. This radio show is a paid placement.